One of the biggest things is like when you look at it, like we're, we're predominantly Gen Z millennial focused audience. I don't know how we got to that. I know that we are focusing on that from a marketing perspective, but I think it's the content and kind of like to your point we were talking about earlier mission which mm -hmm. drives so much of who we are yeah. right. um you know we are authentically the consumer of this product and we are really um focused on on, on finding ways to uplift new voices within yeah. our own community this is the cinematography for actors podcast more than a podcast, Cinematography for Actors is a vibrant community devoted to bridging the gap between talent and crew. Each week, our show offers transparent, insightful conversations with industry leaders. We unveil the magic behind the scenes from candid discussions about unique filmmaking processes to in-depth technical exploration. Join us in unraveling the intricacies of filmmaking one episode at a time. It's more than just cameras and lenses. We aim to inspire, educate, and empower as we peel back the curtain on the art of effective storytelling. Now on to the episode. Hi, everybody. This is Cinematography for Actors podcast. I'm your host, Haley Royal, and I'm seated here with my co-host, Indiana Underhill. Hi. And we're seated with the CEO and co-founder, Damien Pelliccioni of Revry. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're really excited to have you here today. I have a lot of questions about <laughs> just the business. I mean, we've been sitting here talking a little bit about business and the yeah. things you learn while you run a business. Yeah. I'm so curious about, first of all, what was like this like, seed that built this idea for yeah. you? And then what's the first step to creating a streaming network? Yeah. So this... It's funny because like we just celebrated um, eight years consumer facing. Wow. wow, congratulations. And this fall will be nine years since we had the idea. Cool. Um, the idea came to me uh, back in another life when okay. I first moved to uh, Los Angeles. I'm 43 years old now. I was an actor actually. Fantastic. Now I went to performing arts high school in Toronto, moved to New York. Are you from Toronto? From born and raised in Toronto. Oh, yeah. my, oh my god. god. Wait, you mean Bell High. <laughs> oh my where god. I went. Yeah, Frank performing arts. Hall. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh. That's so I'm born and raised in Unionville Markham. I am so happy. Yeah. That's so I funny. Love me. She knows. We love Canucks. Like yeah, we love every Canucks. Time, yes. Every Fellow time Canucks. we meet a Canadian, it's really exciting. I have yeah. like Especially finally energy. I'm like, oh my god, I can't. And you just said <laughs> ranks we could we could so we can relate. Yeah. We can talk about a lot of a lot of things. Uh, okay, sorry, continue. Um wow. like how Celine Dion is gonna open the Olympics. It's gonna be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited. I Have you seen the documentary? No. I'm dying. Okay, I keep seeing it on TikTok, little snippets. I know, and I me too. I keep wanting to watch it. I haven't watched and it I'm yet. Like, oh, she's like, I think that's exciting epic. for most of I'm going to watch it before well. she does the Olympics. Yeah. I'm going to totally watch it before yeah, she does yeah. the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That would yeah. be great. Oh. We can have a whole podcast on just Celine Dion. Please. Yes, we yes. could. <laughs> Anything Canadian, please. Oh, yeah. it makes me so happy. So anyway, so going back, like I, I you know, coming from a performing arts background and uh, after 9-11 moving to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. so I've been in Los Angeles now. It's kind of crazy to say since 2000, October 2001. Wow. So it's wow. been 20, it'll be 23 years. Yeah. I'm like 23, 22 years, 23 yeah. years. Yeah. You this did fall. it. You're yeah. a local. I'm you a local. You stayed in Los Angeles yeah. past that. Like, I feel like 10 years is where people are like, ugh. Like I've done, like if they haven't already, they're like, ah, you know, like, but you did it. Yeah. You stayed. Yeah. More LA's of my adult home. life has, I've lived in Los Angeles yeah. than growing up yeah. in Toronto, say, which Toronto. is wild to me when yeah. you, when you Same. cross that kind of like barrier and totally. you're like, holy shit, like how yeah. did this, how, yeah. how did the time fly? Right. Yeah. So one of the things I've always been curious about is business and I've been very entrepreneurial my entire life. And so um, I had a roommate of mine who won the first Emmy award for best broadband drama back in 2007, Deanna Nicole Baxter, who's super fabulous actress and writer, creator, director, producer, extraordinaire, filmmaker extraordinaire. And so she really inspired me to just start doing things on my own. And so I started producing and then from producing work, um, you know, and at this time in 2007, 2008, this was all about the web and YouTube was just created and mm -hmm. launched in 2006. So like we were creating short form serialized content for the web. Oh, wow. And so um, that parlayed into um, working for a startup uh, and then working for another startup and then working for another startup, mm -hmm. all, yeah. all startups that were based in entertainment. Okay. Got um, so one was like casting, one was platform based, wow. one was um, a filmmaker social network. Another one was, um, you know, focused on like 
uh, software for live streaming, software for podcasting. And it just kind of escalated and elevated into being an expert at technology yeah. for entertainment, specifically for making and creating for entertainment. And so I was working for uh, the last startup before I started Reverie that I was working for was this German based startup out of Cologne, Germany. They were called Make TV and they were a B2B business to business SaaS. So uh, service uh, software as a service uh, platform mm -hmm. that essentially powered a lot of like live streaming for news organizations. And um, and at the time, I was actually the director of business development because my um, my predecessor before me, she got pregnant. And in Germany, they get a year of yes. maternity leave, yes. oh, right? Paid what a paid year of maternity leave. Yeah. So I took over her beat. Like I was just yeah. North America and focused on Hollywood and L.A. and like some, you know, folks in Canada. But um, ended up like working in the international television business on the, you know, on the SaaS tech side for like Al Jazeera and Mediacar mm -hmm. in Singapore and going to like all these different parts of the world and wow. seeing what television, how it operated outside of the United States. Yeah. And this is, you know, 2010, 2000, 2009 until basically like 2015. Wow. And what really blew my mind, I think, was we were at this kind of precipice where streaming was essentially just taking over. Mm -hmm. And streaming is a global experience. It's mm -hmm. not a localized experience. YouTube was the first one to really define that. Um, the barrier to entry is, is just pick up and watch. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is when I was sitting in my, um, my hotel room waiting to do IBC, the International Broadcasters Convention mm -hmm. in Amsterdam, which is yeah. in September. Mm -hmm. And I don't speak German, non sprechen Sie Deutsch. I was trying to learn German. <laughs> I don't know one thing, who is the Schwulen bar, which is where is the gay bar? That's the only thing I really <laughs> needed it. to know. Love it. And, um, and so I watched the Apple keynotes every year, yes. like from the time that Steve Jobs was doing it all the way till Tim Cook. Like it's the Olympics. Like it's just like I have to have all the products. Yeah. I am a <laughs> self-proclaimed Apple file. <laughs> nice. I like live for the culture of Apple. And so I'm watching it and they're talking about Apple TV. And Apple TV specifically in 2015 had introduced TBOS, which was essentially a unique operating system oh. that was for just Apple TV. Mm. Now they had already existed, but it was a closed source um, system. And Roku devices were really popular and Amazon Fire Sticks were really popular but they weren't really open source. And so when Apple does something, it really changes the game. Right. And so there was this light bulb that went off in my head in Amsterdam, like waiting to do IBC, not, not speaking German and watching the Apple, you know, product launch on my, on my laptop, on my, on my computer, which was, oh, we should start a streaming service that is specifically for LGBTQ yeah. and allied communities. Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't until about a month later my husband, who's also my co-founder, Chris Rodriguez, or COO, I love that. Power, power couple. couple. <laughs> we, love the power we could do a whole podcast on working with please. your your partner. Oh, That's the whole separate I have an obsession with power couple. So let's please eventually do. That oh my god, I, I feel like we're gonna write a book at, right. or do a podcast yes. about the do's and don'ts. Um, you should. That That's is a whole idea. other conversation, yeah. but um, <laughs> but through it. through thick and thin. Um, you know, he had broken his iPhone and this is back in the day when you go to the Genius Bar yeah. and you go to get your glass replaced. And so I'm playing with the new Apple TV and I knew about TBOS. I'm like, great, just pack it up. Like I'm waiting yeah. for my husband to get his phone fixed. Like yeah. I, I need to have this in my life. Take it. And and then I, I plug it into my television. And the first thing that you do and you think about it is like when you go to an app store is you search for apps that are of interest yeah. to you. So yes, I typed in LGBTQ, lesbian, gay, all the yeah. acronyms nothing popped up Whoa. nothing and so that solidified wow. that there was a white space yeah. in the market there need. was an opportunity there was yep. a need and so um uh two weeks later my other two co-founders Aliyah j daniels our coo and lashawn mcgee um i sat them down in uh chris and i's living room at our little house in echo park mm. and like pitched them this idea for a streaming service that was for and by and um immediately they were like we're all in <laughs> And for context, like Aaliyah and Chris went to law school together. Chris cool. was actually the attorney at the time for Shark Tank. Yeah. Oh, oh, and great. Deadliest Cats and Storage okay. Wars previously and like was also doing like so People's cool. Choice Awards. And so he quit that job to come do this. 
Leah was also an attorney, but specialized in like small business and employment oh, startup, fantastic. hence why COO. And so great. So, um, and she didn't really like the job she was working at. So, you know, she's like, great, I'm all in. You're and like LaShawn, whatever. Yeah. Amazing. And LaShawn <laughs> so was our, our chief product officer for the first um, seven years. And she was like, yeah, I'm also, she was an editor by trade. She had actually was editing a feature film that was actually in Holly Shorts, ironically enough, oh. like a long, long time ago. And like she had um, worked with everyone from like Ava DuVernay, graduated the American um, Film Institute, you know, really had a eye for programming. And so, um, and uh, we started this with no money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're now venture backed, um, oh, VC backed. Girl. That's yeah, so which was, later. that's a whole other story and struggle. I'm um, being four equal, diverse co-founders oh focusing on an LGBTQ, B2C, mm -hmm. you know, business to consumer media product um, at a time where no one was really yeah. investing in media or didn't understand yeah. how this would all shake out. And so, you know, we immediately um, started building the application with a developer in New York and we started going to all of our friends who were like filmmakers yeah. and like, give us your web series, give us your music video, yeah. give us your short, give us like, Smart. like it's rev share. It's just like YouTube. Yeah. Like this is all we could afford right now. Yeah. But like, you know, we're really going to make a big deal about it. Yeah. And we launched at San Francisco pride 2016. And I remember this vividly. We wa we drove up like all four of us with I'm like our crying. pink, like really <laughs> bad self-printed t-shirts with QR codes back before QR codes were like a thing. People and these, were like, what do we do with this? What do we do with, <laughs> and these flyers yeah. that were like double the size. I don't know why we did like these gigantic flyers. <laughs> they were like double postcard size. Oh my gosh. And we thought they were a good idea. And we gave away like 5,000 of them wow. between like the Saturday before Pride so and the fair. Sunday of Pride. And we did San Francisco Pride because it's bigger than LA. And yeah, there was yeah, just, yeah. it's yeah. tech focused. And what we did is we found ourselves at the end of that weekend being interviewed by Macworld, which is the biggest. Which for you too, yeah. as a big fan. Yeah, so the huge like, fan was oh like, God, oh my God. Macworld. I, I was it. geeked. I was geeked. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe they want to talk to us. But it's like, obviously it was like a queer journalist. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oscar Raimondo, who's still a friend of our company, oh. who was like, I want to write about you guys. Fantastic. This is really super exciting to be the first LGBTQ yes. TBOS app. And so that came out about a month later, end of July, around this time, 2016. And immediately 5,000 people were using our app. Great. And we were in 10 different languages. Um, you know, they had replicated the article and we're getting calls from all these other media outlets to be interviewed. Wow. And cut to today, we have 7 million monthly active viewers, oh we gosh. say, across the globe with about 80% wow. um, of those, 75% of those being in the United States. Congratulations. Um, over 1,000 hours of content wow. working with major studios like Sony, BBC, Lionsgate, Warner Brothers, um, who are fabulous and license this content, um, working with lots of filmmakers and yep. creators. Um, creating lots of amazing yeah. we, we just won a war a glad award for our original project Congrats. drag latina our season two of our spanish and english oh hybrid drag competition series hosted by carmen carrera mm -hmm. formerly of drag race i know i was looking through yeah. all of the originals and i was like there's so much diversity in genre too that you have and yeah. it's so cool like yeah. so are you guys the production company on that or are you saying like just give us stuff and we'll like kind of we're the distributor of it so what we do best is distribution, marketing, and sales, okay. like at our core and technology. That is like what a network, a streaming network is great at. Yeah. But we also had development backgrounds. Wow. So all of the originals or majority of the originals that you see, um, we developed in-house. Wow. Or we may have acquired and then continued to develop with our team. Wow. Um, we work with production companies to service a production. Cool. So, um, and sometimes we just see really great shows that come to us that are either finished or maybe halfway finished or our concept. And we're like, Hey, this totally fits the tone and the voice of the network. We really think we can get behind this and we feel like we can find an advertiser to mm -hmm. support this at the end of the day, because we're not a subscription platform, yeah, we are notice. free to yeah. consumer platform. So wow. we are supported by our advertisers, uh, much like you guys. Yeah, so we are, it's so funny. It. It's a very similar yeah. model, yeah. like yeah. with you guys in the workshops. Yes. And so, we, you know, the content that we develop and that we create has to have a, a integration to a brand yeah. for it to work, for us, yeah. for us to pick it up, for yeah. us to want to, to want to, you know, put our weight behind it. 
Um, and, and, and so for a vast majority of the content that we have, it's been unscripted because mm -hmm. it plays really well with yeah. brands. It's mm -hmm. the easiest to integrate, but we're now branching out and we're starting to think about scripted yeah. um, content for next year. Well, you have like, what's the railroad one? The Yes. Oh, that one we acquired. So the production company is the barn. Okay. Um, they are really, really amazing friends cool. of ours. They actually produce a lot of our shows yeah. We because we just love them. They're great at musicals. Um, um, but that was their short, was their thesis project, um, for Hi. USC. And Whoa. we were like, that's how we met them was they submitted it to us and we're like, you guys are really cool. Would you want to work on some shows oh. with us and cut to today? They actually, they produce, I would say almost 50% of our originals. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, CFA, like Haley and I are all about, you know, you work with who you love and yeah. like, mm -hmm. that's why you design your own thing is because yeah. you're like, I want control over like. Kind of who i'm working with and and you know diversifying that community as much as i can through the people that are like-minded you yeah. know and and so i love to hear that you're like yeah and we met them and it worked and now you know it's like a long-term relationship we yeah. have the, with them with multiple yeah. things on the pipeline yeah. so how does it work for like our audience that's listening who is obviously going to check out reverie but yeah from for the creator standpoint for filmmakers can you talk about what it looks like to work with you guys on a development thing yeah. versus when they already have something and they want to like get it up on the platform? Yeah. So great question. You know, getting things up on the platform, I always say is like our low hanging fruit, yeah, right? Yeah, We're yeah. always licensing yeah. content. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so if it's a finished work, it's really just a matter of like reaching out to us with yeah. a screener and within about a month, we'll get back to that person. Right afterwards and say it's a yay or a nay or we'll give you oh, an offer nice. to license the content um that sounds just yeah. like such an open submission pro just yes. like it's beautiful yeah. look like yeah. we'll look at it yeah. like yeah. don't worry don't be scared just yeah. send it to us we'll look our i love that very much no it's it's really like we're in very much an open door yeah. our one criteria is we now don't distribute any short form work yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. so we are looking for full-length movies yeah. and we're looking for full-length series right um, series do really well because, of mm -hmm. course, one, it makes more money for the filmmaker. Yeah. It makes more money for us because we have more sustainable audiences yeah. that way. But we love film, obviously lots of film yeah. from documentary to narrative, you name it, scripted, unscripted. Like we have tons of stuff um, that yeah. we distribute. Um, and I think like one of the biggest things is like will if most folks, it's funny. And like here's like a little like do and don't. Please. Right. I think one of the biggest things is like when pitching a service like Reverie with a finished work, and then we'll go back to like yeah, the totally. second part of the question. Um, you really have to think like, does this fit into what I'm seeing already on the platform? Mm -hmm. You would be surprised how many people send us stuff. And I'm like, great. What's your favorite show on Reverie? And they're like, oh, I've never watched Reverie. And I'm yeah. like, bang. Yeah, like, sure. I'm like, so you don't even, you're not even the audience. You're not even like looking at who the audience totally. is. Do like, your homework, yeah. Do your guys. homework. Just yeah. do a little yeah. bit of homework. It will go yeah. miles and miles for you. And I will ask that question sometimes strategically just to like get a little bit of like, yeah. you know, um, um, like a gut check on like, is yeah. this person paying attention to like what we're actually yeah. putting out? Totally. Um, most people are today. Yeah. Like, I think it was like more, the, that's more like the early day, mi sure. like mistakes when no, we weren't so recognizable as a brand. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, one of the biggest things is like, when you look at it, like we're really, we're 75% of our 7 million users are under the age of 45. Wow. We're predominantly Gen Z millennial focused audience. Wow. I don't know how we got to that. I know that we are focusing on that from a marketing perspective, but I think it's the content and kind of like, to your point, we were talking about earlier, mission, which mm -hmm. drives so much of who we are. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, we are authentically the consumer of this product and we are really um, focused on, on, on finding ways to uplift new voices within yeah. our own community. Um, you know, so we're not doing like coming out stories. Those have been so done before mm -hmm. and we're focused on minority communities, you know, what be it, um, you know, black, Hispanic, indigenous, yep. AAPI audiences and, and communities or intersectional communities um, where we're showing, you know, uh, a very diverse cast or a very diverse story that Beautiful. has never had a chance to really be seen or had an opportunity to be, have a platform wow. like Reverie. What I love about it as well is like, because you're like, you even said it, it's like, it's the low hanging fruit to kind of getting, working with that relationship with us is there's not a lot of platforms that have submission links ready to go like that. Yeah. And what that means is that you are creating an industry that showcases 
filmmakers at every level as long as that story aligns. Yeah. And I think it it's like kind of emotional because and I imagine that's like why it's so wonderful for you as you've been developing this. But and Haley probably feels the same as like a lot of people, you know, that we work with that I know that she knows are constantly like, how do I? get it so how do i go to the next even step? start like how yeah. do i do i have to get a sales agent do i have to yeah. like no. have my right manager do i have to like have money to just do my own pr like and i think it becomes a dead end of like i have this amazing film that i want to share that has an interesting story right. but because it's not you know i don't have 10 years of credits behind me no one's willing to look at it and i love that you're like we'll take a look at it like yeah. we'll at least give you the green light of like yes we will check it out and then let you know and I think that's so rare in this industry. And that email, by the way, goes to like me, Chris, our chief content officer. Wow. It goes to Alex Albright, our wow. head of programming. It goes to it goes to the like five or six different like team members. And we respond Amazing. pretty quickly to say like, hey, we are in receipt and like give yeah. us sometimes it could be two weeks and sometimes it could be upwards of a month. That's it just depends sure. on like the season yes. and like yeah, how busy course. we are. We're still yeah. a startup. It's We're still a small team. To you. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And sometimes I have 500 emails to answer. Yeah, but on. um. <laughs> But um, but no, but I mean, like we respond and we watch everything like, you know, if I'm not watching something, Alex or her team is watching something. Yeah. Um, and so much, you know, going back to what you said before is it's so much of this business is relationship based, yes. like and also just being a marketer yourself, totally. like being a filmmaker today, being an actor, writer, producer, any like type of creative yeah. You actually need to learn marketing. It's ninety five percent business. It's ninety five. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I think like learning to market yourself yeah. in a business to business, like whether it's a streamer, whether it's mm -hmm. you know um, a agent who does below the line, yeah. or you know, because film distributors are, are dying. Yeah. Film distributors are right. disappearing. I mean, there was like three that like wanted us to buy them this year because wow. they were shutting down their business model because the business model is it's no longer not, sustainable. Yeah, yeah. When we live in a creator economy, when yeah. we live in a direct consumer econo economy, or when you can just go on a streaming service and like, you know, all the right people will get that email immediately and respond. So there is, um, and everyone's fighting for content. So it's, you know, people will watch, people will respond to you. People will seek you out sometimes too. Like if we hear that there's like a festival hit or darling at like Holly Shorts, for instance, or any or, or Outfest or any of these other festivals, LGBTQ or otherwise, um, you know, we'll sometimes seek it out if we don't if we think that we can compete. Yes, and what I mean yeah. by that is like if it's at South by or or yeah, yeah, or yeah. or yeah. or um like Sundance or Sundance, Sundance. like we're 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 gonna get we're gonna get right we're gonna get bought out by, mm -hmm. you know, someone is gonna beat us to the punch from yeah. like an Amazon Prime or Netflix. It, yeah. <laughs> um but we're still interested in those in those pieces. And believe it or not, there's still a lot of stuff from even those festivals that yeah. get, you know, glossed over. Yes. So we're like, great, we'll take it. And like you have the potential yeah. to actually work with those filmmakers in the long term yes. versus like getting bought out and then being like, okay yeah maybe if it's another festival darling yeah. we'll come back to you if you're like a larger 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 and, service and it's funny i can't say who but there yeah. is a amazing filmmaker friend of ours that came to us with a project that was, had a festival darling all throughout last year and he um came to us with this project and we're like of course like this is phenomenal it has all these celebrities in it you made this yourself you you know crowdfunded and it has had so much traction um, we would love to put this on Reverie and make this like an original and create an entire like strategy, yeah, PR, marketing, yeah, yeah. release, programming around it. Um, so we do have like some of those legacy kind of relationships, but like this person we hadn't worked with in like since probably the inception of Reverie, wow. like in like five or six wow. years and came back around and said, hey, I have something I think would be perfect for you guys because I don't see this living anywhere else unless I just throw this out on YouTube. Yeah. And so, you know, I think like, you know, we were talking about networking earlier. Yeah. Networking is such a big part of that. Totally. And one of the things that I've always taught my staff or anyone who's ever worked for, for me or for Reverie is develop a relationship, not the business deal. A hundred Because that relationship mm -hmm. will take you. You don't know where that's going to take yeah. you. It's going to take you, you know, 10, 15, 30 years from now out. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that person could be sitting in a totally different seat than they are now. Totally. So having that relationship today could be building your equity and your capital for tomorrow. Yeah. The relationships are happening like on the beach at someone's party, at yes. someone's birthday party, or like at dinner at like a group dinner at someone's home, yeah. or you know like they're happening in places where it's not a business meeting set no, up that you're not attending. At all. No, and it's like the follow ups or the casual instances, you know. Yeah. And I and I think it takes a lot of people a long time to learn that, but if they can yeah. learn that earlier on, I think 
you'll have more authentic relationships come out of it, more authentic problem um, projects. And like, it'll just be kind of a better industry, yeah. you know? And so I love that you said that because I, we talk about that all the time. It's like, yeah, no, those deals happen at like dinner. They don't yeah. happen like- Or in the hallway. Oh, that's all. Like going yeah. from one screening yeah. to the next. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, just I mean, go to- yeah. Film festivals. Go yeah. to film festivals. Yeah. The, yeah. Our, an argument we have a lot over here is like, <laughs> you yeah. don't have to have a project in the festival no. to go. There are yeah. so many yes. people I know who refuse to go to a film festival yes. if they don't have a reason to be there. The reason can be just to casually run into someone that you'll probably see at another film festival yeah. in a couple of months yes. and to slowly begin building an authentic relationship with yeah. that person. Yeah. It, you don't have to be winning a film festival to go to it. Yes. No, yeah. No, totally. It's networking. I mean, we were just at Can Lion, which mm -hmm. is the marketing and advertising and side of Can. Yes. Thank you. We were the first LGBTQ business to ever present at Can Lion. And we presented a study that we did with Nielsen mm -hmm. Um, around LGBTQ audiences and connected TV, which also had never been done. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to do, we like to break a lot of firsts. Um, yeah. And so we we like to be very creative with our presentation. So it's like, you know, I got up on stage with an executive from Nielsen and talked about, you know, oh, this is what we, this, these were our findings about LGBTQ audiences, which over index obviously in connected television. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and then we put on a Vogue ballroom show and yes. we flew in, we had flown in six Voguers <laughs> from Paris, so our executive producer of our big Vogue, um, ballroom show That's pride cool. ball, which just aired mm -hmm. actually last night, cool. our second annual, um, sponsored by BET plus. Yeah, Pride Belt. So like voguing, you know, obviously you probably have seen legendary. It's a type of dance. Yeah, voguing. I, wait, I actually didn't know. Like, oh my god! Tell so me, can you tell me better? Can I be? So now I know that you. Now I know you didn't go to the Madonna concert or the Beyonce concert last year. No, I'm, just, I'm teasing. I'm kidding. I'm no, we were building a startup. Oh, I'm a Gaga fan and we too. Didn't go to any no, concerts I'm just teasing. Last year. No, but it's yeah, funny. Yeah. I only say that because they. It was amazing to yeah. see Beyonce and Madonna like making Vogue like yeah. such a big part. I mean, Madonna, she, you know, Vogue, the song Vogue, like that comes yeah, from yeah. the '80s era, but it's voguing, which is a form of dance. Yeah, which is like the yes, and there was Pose on bathroom. Pose, which was yeah. Ryan Murphy's show oh, on. Yeah on um, FX and later there was Legendary which was on um, on HBO Max and so you know we both those shows unfortunately were canceled after three seasons right. one was scripted one was an actual reality competition show but we've always been very big in the voguing ballroom community and so it's a dance tournament like that is the, the the basic way to like kind of describe it kind of like a dance battle yes it's a voguing. dance battle That's exactly so cool. yeah <laughs> And so we put on, we did this um, big show last year, Pride Balls uh, season one, and it was sponsored by Nike and Hankel's got to be like hairspray, hair gels. And so um, we had, you know, different categories that Bogers will walk or battle and wow. dance to. And we had a panel of judges. We put it in front of like 800 people at the Neue House here in LA. This year we did it at the Frankie downtown. BET Plus was our big advertiser. And the categories, they have to dress up or kind of bring a narrative story in their form of dance. Okay, we are stoked to shout out our audio sponsor, Deity Microphones. Their S-Mic 2 Pro shotgun mics have impeccable sound clarity, directionality, headphone monitoring, and a user-friendly design. And we're proud to launch our studio with them. Our goal is to bring you educational gems every episode. And with these mics, you can listen to the best quality audio possible wherever you are. To learn more about using Deity Mics for your own podcasting, voiceover, or filming needs, go to deitymic.com. We have some exciting news. CFA has teamed up with We Make Movies to get you a discount on production management services, including access to comprehensive production insurance and workers' comp for your next shoot. Visit wemakemovies.org slash insurance and use code CFA23 on your intake form for 10% off your quote. Cool. Yeah. And so BT Plus was really focused on Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead with Nicole Richie, their remake. <laughs> okay. And so we had Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter Vogue like categories um, from service industry outfits, like from the original Whoa. film to like, you know, just just so much uh, great goodness that focused on this promoting, so cool. you know, so their new fun. film on BT Plus. Yeah. Oh, I don't it's no, 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 no. You're going to come to the next ball. I'm going to invite you to the next ball. But you're going to watch Pride Ball. I'm really into it. Probably. But it's, so, it's yeah. super, you do get into it. Like, yeah. it's very, you can't, because you're watching a competition and it's something so unique yeah. and super fun. Oh. 
so we bring like these things to our our to these industry events like yes. hand lion and so we brought these vogers down and we put yes. on a ball on the terrace in the blazing hot heat in the like french riviera in front of two thousand people oh, who were yeah. just like what is this that i'm yes. watching like, like this is so cool analytics. they were there and for analytics they got a vogue they got ball. and then they got a vogue <laughs> ball we flipped yeah. it Amazing. and they were just gagging like they were taking photos this and videos so good. and can was so, so excited smart. like they were like Look we want you to come back so yes, smart and exactly. so fun yeah Aww. wow so this is the type of stuff that we do we look for disruptive creative yeah. ideas whether it's you know in these places but you know Going back to kind of what you were saying, like with Can, yeah. like half the business that I did were not in the meetings that we created yeah. prior to going to Can. They were like literally walking from one event to the next in the hallway, yeah. like yeah. or just passing a friend and being 100%. like, "Oh my god, I haven't seen you. How yeah. are you? What are yeah. you working on? What are you doing?" You know, and hearing that's a, the best part about of the industry, next. by the way. Yeah, that is the most fun stuff when yeah. like your relationships, like in passing or catching up, turn into something where you get to see that person more and also work on something yeah. together. That's like the best part of our industry. And yeah. like what I'm always telling people, Haley like comes from the actor side originally. And when we first started doing CFA, she was like, networking is a dirty word. I hate networking. I was like, I love networking. I was terrified networking of it. It's my favorite yeah. thing in the world. It's the most powerful invention. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. and, and now like Haley loves networking. She, do you still hate the word? No. Oh, cool. I'm <laughs> no, it's, it's like, not wait, scary so anymore. Now that, you know, like now that I have experienced the side it's the side of the industry that i think yeah. a lot of actors never see because yes. Yes. we are trained or somehow just like have it in our heads as a collective that the way we have to break into the industry here is to go to our job as a server go to acting class go home learn our lines do our self tape be a good girl and wait you know yeah. like yeah and and networking is the scary thing that sometimes you have to go to this thing and like bring your cards and like yeah. everyone around you is scary yeah. and has your life and your future in their hands and yeah. like it's not like that on other sides of the industry on no. on any in any other <laughs> yeah. avenue you can just go have a good time and make some friends and then someday be like should we shoot something you know like it it happens so organically. Or like, hey, you knew yeah. that person. Do you guys want to, you guys should connect over yeah. this. And yeah. Like, well, you, I think you guys would be good. You know, it's like kind of like matchmaking too a lot yeah. of the time, which I love. Yeah. So the idea that yeah. it is, orga it's organic yes. and it's friendship is yeah. true. Yeah. And it's very exciting to me. And it's something that I love now. We changed our focus. We, we did you it. Know, <laughs> no, but you know, what's funny is it's like, I think like the scary part, if I, you know, can dive into the psychology of this Please. is that we're you're not conditioned because you weren't taught how to network like when yeah. you were learning your trade no, right because it's just important that you're a good actor right and exactly you learn your trade. your trade yeah and I, that should speak for itself and people will fall over themselves at right. you that's not how it works but no but you have to like you have to market yourself mm -hmm. and it's the same way of like you gotta market yourself to agents you gotta market yourself yeah. to managers and i think of like what i think people get scared of is like you're marketing you're creative but you actually already know how to do marketing. Yep. You you had to figure out how to get that server job. So you had to market your resume to get an interview right. to get a job, right? Yeah. Same thing, same concept. Mm -hmm. You um you had to find a roommate and you were looking for somebody and maybe you interviewed those people and like yeah. or you were looking for places that you wanted to live. So it's like you were There's your networking. You were networking to yeah. figure out where to live. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same basic tools and model. Mm -hmm. But I think where people get tripped up is that like, oh shit, but this is for something it's that I really stakes. want. This and one it's matters. high stakes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we hold it on this in our psyche on this like high, like high pedestal. Yeah. And so part of it I think is just developing the confidence to be like the same fucking thing excuse yeah, my yeah, french yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you take that you actually inherently already know how to do this and if you just take away the high stakes and the fact that this is something you really want yeah. and you just go after it then you actually it'll just happen like things yeah. just start yeah. to happen they all the fall into place can be lowered like you said Absolutely. take away the high stakes the stakes can be lowered by continuously going to these yeah. places and yeah. there will always be more people to meet and there will always be more chances to create with Absolutely. people but you have to go many times yeah even if you don't have a film in the festival yeah. Yeah, yes totally yeah. even if you don't have yeah. a film that should be in like that should be in a t-shirt yeah, yeah. <laughs> go if anywhere just even if you have don't have a film in the festival and people like, go what, what does that yeah. mean and go to like, holly short turn around Go. Yeah. 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 Go. Yeah. Go, go to the party. <laughs> go go support independent film. But so can line. That's amazing. Yeah. So that was a really big turning point for us. And we had so many new advertisers and new business that came yeah. out of that. 
um, and just to be looked at internationally yeah. in that way, I think was really super exciting. Yeah. Um, and and previous year, last year, 2023, we were also the first LGBTQ company to ever present at an upfront, a TV upfront. Oh, and wow. it was at the New Fronts in New York. TV so TV upfronts are like when all the studios and networks will present to the advertisers like their shiny new shows that are coming out Whoa. for the fall. Um, yeah, and so we did this at the New Fronts, which is the digital version of the TV upfronts. And, you know, there's like Samsung there and there's, you know, Snapchat and there's Facebook and a whole bunch of big, you know, and there's also like streamers and Vizio and a whole bunch of other yeah. folks, Netflix, you name it. And so we were on a shared stage, meaning like, you know, we can't afford to do like our own stage. Yeah, we're, on, yeah, yeah. we're on the multicultural stage with cool. like Hispanic and black and other and API and other types wow. of like um, networks or, you know, smaller streamers like yeah. in our space. And we were the first LGBTQ company to ever present there. And the way that we did it is we did, instead of getting up and talking about analytics, which is mm -hmm. what most of them do, like here's a sizzle and some analytics about like our new show, yeah. you know, come on, Dove Soap, you want to sponsor this. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did a 15 minute musical. So we, we, oh my gosh. and it was actually <laughs> yeah. the barn slash the silo, that oh, same team yeah. that Is actually produced it for us. Yeah, yes. I'm going to send you guys the link. <laughs> I love that. So we did it in we'll the vein of the wizard of Oz yeah. and I played the wizard. And so, and so <laughs> it was really fun. And we brought in talent from our shows and we did it as a musical. Cause you know, we're big, we're gay. We yeah, want to, yeah. we want to do everything as a musical. Yeah. And, and what really disrupted what people's opinion was of a TV upfront was really unique and we were voted by Forbes the number one thing to watch at the new fronts oh. over over Amazon and Roku, Congrats. which for context they spent oh like over five gosh, million dollars on their new fronts and we're like a baby fraction. Can you of imagine any of that? the relief that all of yeah. those advertising executives or representatives felt when it wasn't one more team yes. getting up <laughs> with the fucking grass yes, and the yes, grids yes. and you're like it's a musical and they're like oh thank they're God. like wait we we're gonna entertain you. you we're staying here we're not going to go yeah. out and get coffee for this one no we're no. Wow. no totally and i think great. it shocked them and disrupted them there were so many phones up and so mm -hmm. many people so this year we came back to the new fronts we did cab a reverie <laughs> I love cab wait, which was our cabaret theme don't hate me she knows this i'm gonna admit it i hate musicals cabaret i love them they, you should go see it on broadway it's really good oh, okay, freddie cool. redmond okay. and is you amazing heard it here. we're getting indiana to broadway <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really cabaret. and you know what's funny it. we went to go see it before we did the upfront this year and it cabaret was it was experiential mm. so the moment you walk in there's like players oh, and I they hand that. you a shot she of sherry you hate it's that. this <laughs> whole thing is <laughs> it's, it's like broad broadway is i think 2.0 is like experiential yeah, yeah, yeah. there has to be you can't I just go that. sit in a theater like it has to have an experiential yeah. element yeah. and it was amazing so, so kudos so we did cabaret so reverie right. and i played i played um the host and the so MC. the mc and oh i even gosh, sang did you do money 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 yes yeah we did money 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 we did that as part of it money yeah. money money i know yeah, sorry we I totally like did it did yeah. the musical scene. i but just know i like that but that's, that's funny really that you hate musicals but you know that part you know that part i, know, I love yeah. cabaret everything else i Haley knows the my best. impersonation of musicals the best it's just like someone talking and then they go but what is it like it's just like it just starts <laughs> into something yeah um but yeah was, i love cabaret so. but it was it was one of those moments <laughs> where that room because of last year was yeah. full there was like not a single it was Everyone standing room was only wow. so much so Get that like there. even the conference staff when i was going to check in they're like we loved you last year we're taking our break so we could watch your presentation oh this gosh. year i was like they oh my god a that's so stage cool next year but you are yeah. representing like what yeah. you do at your company so it's yeah. like the most authentic representation of like working together like with yes. reverie and yeah. so that's why it's so cool because it's not like you're just doing it as like a marketing gimmick no. it's like you're doing it because like that's what your audience is. That's what your brand is. Like, that's what you're trying to get out and like promote. And like, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, that's like a fun way and it's creative and it's cool. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's and really this cool. is where I think like, w even from filmmakers is like, how are you disrupting with your projects? Yes. Like what we've already seen, totally. right? And so you really gotta like think outside the box. You gotta do things outside the box. Mm -hmm. Like take away everything that they taught you in film school yeah. and like just create something totally new and authentic. Yeah that no one else could like replicate because it's so you totally i mean like and this is like a revolving door of friends but 
Chris Nolan's original student film that he like put out that's available for everyone is the weirdest film I've ever seen in my life. I've seen it. It's so So weird. weird. It's so art house. It's so art house. So strange. It wasn't like no one will get it to this reference and make it like this so people can see I can do that. It's like, no, I'm just going to make it my own. And like, it's just this like really strange short film and it works. Like, it's just like, you can see the thought behind it. You can see that. And it's just, so I love that. It's like, yeah, you take, it's almost like you take your foundational tools and you're like, okay, I have that now. What do I throw out the window? What do I keep for this? And how do I like bring in my own personality? Well, your personality and your story. I think that's the most important thing that creators and filmmakers like don't do enough of, or they feel like they need to. So far, like we like siphon of us, I feel. right yeah, like siphon because I feel like the most interesting stories are that that person's own story because yeah. none of us have the same story yeah. none of us come from the same background yeah. none of us have the same struggle like and and I think like for me when I started to really amplify who I was like right now you're getting boy Damien but I do identify as like non-binary yeah. as well as male yeah. and when I was at Can Lion I was in full makeup and heels That's and an amazing awesome. like you know, outfit. Yeah. I I transition between you know my my female, my feminine self, yeah. as well as my masculine self, and I think that that's who I am. That's when I'm yeah. most confident, when totally. I feel most uh, most real, because it's 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 who I am. It's how yeah. I express myself. It's and so I think like when when I started to do that, and I didn't actually come out as non-binary until the pandemic, wow. um, business shifted for me. In a big, big way. Yeah, as an executive and even just with our our company. Um, I think when you can authentically be who you want to be and amplify that through your storytelling, like people are attracted to that. There is a law of attraction. There's a magnetism (laughs) to your authentic self that nobody can replicate. No one. Yeah. Yeah. And there is there is such power behind that. And I think that there is such audience behind that, right? Because what I noticed is even in like business to business spaces. Mm When, because I never look like this in a business business space, I will totally be full femme cool. and wearing some amazing, you know, full face of yeah, makeup yeah. and like dress or frock or like oversized, amazing. like yeah, you we know, saw your on the website. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, my Instagram, right? Um, it's empowering for other people to want to do the same. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I have like queer and non-binary folks come up to me like, "Oh my God, it's so great to see someone." like me in a position of power who has a voice yes. or yeah. I'll have like the uncle, the aunt, the parent of like a trans or non-binary or queer kid who tells me their story of like their kid coming out or their kid transitioning or their kid, you know, um, ha- being an ally to the community because they're part of their LGBTQ, yeah. you know, student association. And I'm like, that is so empowering because what I am doing is giving yeah. voice to the voiceless. What we are creating with our network is a, a place for stories at all levels to be told both independent or studio yeah Yeah. incredible so i want to talk about the scaling so you went to san francisco pride you have five thousand people you're at seven million what what happens after pride like back then right (laughs) like so you got the you hand out the the double-sized flyers yes and then how do you scale a company like between year one and year eight so a lot of blood sweat and tears a lot of um ups and downs a lot of sacrifice um um you know you scale you you scale a business by having a firm belief in what you're doing um and not giving up because also you know to say that i would say 30 percent of of success is still timing right Mm -hmm. and so the timing between 2016 and 2020 was not ideal for us, but we sustained ourselves and kept ourselves afloat and kept going and kept trying and kept pitching investors and VCs and filmmakers and studios and even distributors to like give us content on spec. Mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't until the pandemic where we had a social shift, obviously um, with Black Lives Matter. And we also had a economic shift because there was a lot of money and resource being pumped into um you know the arts and creative and and investment specifically and so there were you know we are black owned 50 percent women of color black owned 25 percent chris is hispanic and gay i am um, non-binary but i am also queer and so 75 percent alia is an ally she's our coo so she identifies as heterosexual mm-hmm. um but lashawn is lesbian and lashawn is also a veteran 25 percent veteran so we check a lot of different wow. dei boxes but that wasn't always the purpose 
we just knew by being four equal co-founders that this was something that we wanted to have as equitable for all yeah. of us and build together so we all had skin in the game so we would see this through. That I didn't know at the time would be our greatest strength wow. to scaling our business today because you have diversity of thought. Mm -hmm. That's one, mm -hmm. right? And the diversity of thought allows Aliyah and LaShawn and Chris and myself being from Canada, like our backgrounds being so diverse yeah. in our education, the way that we thought, the way that we, um, you know, tackled problems um, with the business, like hurdles. Um, and and so I think that was a big part of it. Um, and, 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 you know, there is a podcast that um, Shel Sandberg, the COO of Facebook, Meta, um, talks about it's on Masters of Scale. Um, and she's like, when she had pods at Facebook where it was all, you know, hetero, cis, white males coming from like the same five Ivy Leagues mm -hmm. and then the diverse pod of engineers coming from different schools, different backgrounds, different races, ethnicities, yeah. gender, markers, sexualities, that pod that had diversity of thought, like shot up about 50, outperformed yeah. 60, 70 percent over the one that didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I, I believe that that has been our biggest strong suit yeah. where economically people weren't necessarily believing that prior to 2020, but then 2021, 2020 started to happen and investments started flowing our way because there was a, there was studies that Forbes put out around being minority co-founders. And, and by the way, that includes women. Just right. women yeah, right. in general. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. a minority, not yeah, male, I like know. basically I not know. straight male. <laughs> we know. Yeah, that, we know. <laughs> and only like, 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 like five or six percent of all venture capital was going to yeah. that, yeah, the minority yeah. founder. But yet we gross 40, 50 percent higher margins. Yeah. And, and it's Wild. like kind of like, oh, the rest of the venture world started to wake up and realize the investment world, hey, we need to start taking we need to start paying attention to this. And yeah. these are actually really great investments. Yeah. And that's when we're able to get a lot of venture through the door and really build a business. Wow. And so to ask yeah. you that second part of the question. Yeah. About, oh yeah. No, Sorry. No, yeah. We went on so many tangents. I know. I'm, and I'm so grateful for all of them. It's I a mean, Canadian and us, eh? <laughs> My boyfriend recently brought, um, bought Tim Hortons coffee that I came yes. to, and I was really excited about it. I thought it was so oh sweet. God. And he was like, I found this. It like came up online, and Best I coffee. thought you might enjoy it. And I was like, it actually is. Like, yeah. It's like our McDonald's coffee, but it's really good. Yes. Like, yeah. it's like actually good. We have Tim Hortons pods we here. We do. I made, her, I, I made us buy Costco <laughs> business, uh, Tim oh Hortons God. pods. And so when people come, I'm like, Tim Hortons. I <laughs> love it. Um, but no, to ask the second part of that question. So great. People can submit, do your yeah. homework. What about if, the, and I think maybe the answer, and you tell me, is that they should submit what they already have and then build a relationship with yeah. you. But how can they work in development with you yeah. when looking at originals? Yeah, so we put out, it's funny, it's like this is around the time of year that we look at the most originals. Uh -huh. Our cycle it, for development is like Q3, so okay. July, August, and September. Um, and that mainly has to do with how we are attaching brands brands we're pitching throughout the year but mainly it's you know it's a year in advance so we're already in 2025 planning 2024 right. is completely obviously spoken yeah. for and we're looking for gaps so like do we already have a show that's around voguing yes so we're not going to look for another voguing show do we have a show around hispanic drag drag latina yes so we're not going to look for another yeah. one of those we're looking for gaps that we are not necessarily paying attention to or not necessarily like in our purview. Yeah. So this is why watching the content and like being a consumer of the network is really crucial in order to pitch them new ideas. Um, things that we are always thinking about right now is like food, beauty, fashion, um, looking and, and gaming, yeah. video gaming right. is really, really big for our community. And we don't have any shows that surround those concepts. Um, and so those are things that like you heard it here, yeah, like I our know. ideas yeah. that you could pitch us right now because there are advertisers that want to put dollars behind it. Cool. And that essentially is we in turn take those dollars and use that as the production budget. And what does that process look like? So say someone yeah. was like, I want to do something in gaming. Yeah. What is the next step that they need to do in order to reach out to you? Yeah. I mean, look, having a calling card like a one sheet yep. is really crucial. Great. Um, um, which gives the who, what, when, where, why, yep. um, you know, the five W's. I think that 
and and submitting that through our submission um you know email through yeah. that 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 part of our website on reverie.tv which can be found at the bottom yeah. of the website it says submit your content <laughs> yeah and and we take new ideas like all the time oh, cool. like we're looking and if if it's something you know that one we don't need a whole bible you know i don't we all we don't want to pressure folks to do too much work because yeah. that's kind of like it's like a courtship right so it's mm -hmm. like hey you're baiting me with that one sheet where i'm like oh there's this really cool queer design show. Yes. We don't have a design show. Oh, and we're talking to Home Depot. Oh my God, like, let's get a meeting. So then we get a meeting and then at the meeting, we'll be like, okay, show us the yeah. whole concept. Give mm -hmm. us the whole treatment, the Bible, the yeah. like, the six episode arc. Don't put the cart in front of the horse. Yeah. Did yeah. I yeah. use that correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. You did. Yeah, you don't sure give away it. too much. Like, yeah. you know, and, and, and then that's where we're really making decisions on like, okay, and asking a lot of questions cool. and being inquisitive and being like, yeah. Does this fit in what we're doing? Is it, and we take it to committee with programming and marketing and sales mm -hmm. and like pick it apart and think like, is this something that could work? And also is this budget and is the timeline realistic for us and for the person? Right. Right. Um, you know, if your last project was only $60,000, I don't think you should ask for $6 million for your yes. next project. Like there, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like I use also the example of like working your way up the ladder, climbing mm -hmm. the corporate chain. It's similar. Like if you are only as good as your last project, but that doesn't mean that your last project doesn't, your next project doesn't need to be an elevation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you, you can't level jump. Like it's yeah. like, it's gotta make sense. Totally. And like our budget range is between, you know, anywhere between 250,000 to a million per project. So we're not like at a Netflix budget yeah. range. We're not at like a Hulu. But you know kind what's of great about range. that is it's a fantastic yeah. place for a lot of authentic creators yes. and storytellers to come in at yeah. because you're going to get people who are like really doing it out of sheer passion and yeah. haven't like sold out or something like yeah. and so that's actually like a really great budget and you are creative with their resources yeah. and like yeah. pulling and know on how to, their networks yeah. already and already know how to do that yeah Sometimes. like you have to you have to be a media preneur yeah. like an yeah. entrepreneur <laughs> so it's like i want like a, being a producer is being a media preneur it's like okay like what resources can yep. you tap like because mm -hmm. we're still a startup we're still tapping resources okay. i still wear multiple hats yep. you know we're not at that level where we're you know and i don't think i ever want to be at that level where we're like so big that we're just paper pushing like one thing 100%. you know yeah. and that's really what a studio is you know today it's like yeah. you get hired to do one thing and just think very myopically yeah. i can't do that i have adhd really bad adhd yeah. so it's like i have to be a hundred places at I once. I get it, yeah. Um, but like we want to see, and even like going back to like this filmmaker, which I can't say who, but like yeah, yeah. that I'm really excited about coming back full circle to work with is he is a media preneur and he is really smart and nice. he has a resource pool. He taps his resource pool to make the content that he makes, yeah. to market it, to uh, evangelize it, even to sell it. And that's the type of person because they're not, they're entrepreneurial in their approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the type of person I want to attach myself yeah. to because they yeah. think like us well, it's mm -hmm. the like and they work like again. us. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Always. Always. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Damien, yeah. Thank you Sorry. so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, did you have one? Yeah. And you were going to ask yeah, a question. I, did, I wanted to mention something. I've said this before about film festivals and it kind of, it just like pinged for me when you were saying, yes, if someone sends something that's like a queer design tour and oh, we're show and oh, we're talking to Home Depot. That also is like very it all kind of like depends on like time and coincidence yes, yeah of totally. what's going to work for you in that season of yeah. programming so uh it i think it's just important for people who are putting their work out there creating something that they're proud of and then submitting to any place right if you're not chosen it doesn't mean you suck yeah it oh, often no, means no. that it just isn't matching up time wise yeah, and you just have to try again. Which is what you so, said 30% of yes, the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all about uh, which advertisers we have right now kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And like maybe try again soon. Yeah. Or like, and I'm so glad that you said that because I don't want filmmakers to get discouraged yeah. when it comes to timing. There are so many projects that like will say like, hey, we're going to pass on this right now. And it just has to do with like bad timing for us yeah. or just not matching like what we already have ahead of us. Mm -hmm but I really want to help and like I'll introduce you to other folks or like, Hey, come back to me in like six months if you haven't already like sold this. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things is like, like, you know, I remember being an actor, like you'd ask for feedback from the casting director, even if you didn't get the role, yeah. it's okay to ask for feedback yeah. from yeah. the studio, the network mm -hmm. or whoever totally. that you're pitching and be like, Hey, can I ask why you passed? Or like, was yeah. there something was that it? I can improve upon yeah. either in my pitch or in my deck or, or like, you know, give, give me the why. Yeah. 
will always answer that question, mm -hmm, right? Like, and I, and I'm happy to answer that question. And I'll be honest, you know, it's funny is it's rare to have people who do ask that question right. and I get super excited because I'm like, here's a filmmaker who wants to improve. And you're starting a relationship. And it's starting a relationship. For the feedback, it starts yeah. a relationship yeah. because you're now more like, like engaged with that yeah. one person yeah. rather than just like a, Oh, we're going to pass this time and they never follow up with you again. I can you're remember. Not annoying. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. It's totally not. I can, cause there's a way to do it. That is, you know, you're asking it's professional. professional. Yeah. yeah. Out of like, I would say, 500 projects in the last like you know eight years that we have been pitched or put in front of us i would say that like maybe five to ten asked for feedback wow and oh it shocked gosh. me because like i won't offer it unless it's you know asked yeah. but like the ones that ask for feedback those are the ones that i'm still we're working with always. today yeah. or i always keep in mind always. or i'll come back to mm -hmm. and say yep. Like we we recently did this great commercial with Rain Valdez, mm -hmm. who was actually the first trans person to be nominated for an Emmy Award oh. um, and amazing filmmaker, actress, writer, director, creator. Um, and she had started a production company and I've always wanted to work with Rain. And she had sent me her deck. And the timing of it was we need a production company to do this Pantene ad that's for Pride. Um, Rain, like it's not a huge budget. I know this isn't like, you know, Razor Tongue or one of your, 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 your yeah, Emmy yeah, yeah. nominated projects, but yeah. do you want to do this? She's like, hell yeah. yeah. I have, I'm, this is timing for me. It's great. I'm yeah. looking for like something to do. And she made this beautiful, amazing, like kick ass 30 second commercial that to me, I think is like, I can't wait to like, I want to put it up for like awards and stuff like that next year. I can't wait to watch it. It's yeah, so it's good. Exciting. It's so good. Wow. And, 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 and she was so proud of it too, but it was like the timing of that relationship was she just happened to reach out yeah. and ping me and I was looking for somebody and immediately yeah. like you're hired, let's yeah. go, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you never know, like you, it's so much of it is just being consistent yeah. and being rem yeah. and remind people you're, a, you're around in there, yes. like not yeah. in a desperate way, but like, I think one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from an agent was like, be at the top of someone's inbox. You know, yes. because we yes. get overloaded. Rain was always at the top of my there inbox. There you go. You yeah. get overloaded with information, socials, yeah. like you get buried and stuff. Just like maintenance on relationships is like just checking in or being updating people about what you're up to is a reminder that you exist. And a week yeah. later, they might be like, oh, wait, we need a DP or we need an actor for that thing. Like the, Haley might be great. Or, you know, maybe we think of Reverie for like that next. Like it's just it's just so interconnected. And I think once yeah. people start to realize that, like, you're not a bother, like it. It, it changes the way that you yeah. work in this industry. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited about everything Rep yeah. is doing. Thanks. Damien, thank you so much Thanks for sitting so much down with me. us. We can't wait to um, get you on to talk about power couples. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. Coming back. We're talking about the book, book release. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's going to be <laughs> my, my, exactly. my next book. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we can't wait to yeah. check out all of the stuff you have on the slate for next year. Thanks. The Pantene commercial, Vogue Ball, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pride Ball. Pride Ball, yep. but the Vogue Ballroom. Yes. Right? Cabaret. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cabaret. Yeah. Right? I'll send you guys Cabaret. a link too. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks we'll see so you next time. Thanks, Thanks so much. Damien. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Join us in bridging the gap between talent and crew. Start by subscribing on your preferred podcast platform, sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on vendor discounts, community events, and new podcast releases, and educate yourself through our free course releases on YouTube. It all starts at cinematographyfractors.com. And if you like this episode, consider leaving a review to make it easier for other listeners to find us.